Welcome to the Evidence-Based Market. I'm William Chuttle with Symmetry Partners. I'm Andrea Loin. Today we are going to be discussing events. We're actually going to turn this into a two-part series and focus in on, in the first part, virtual events, and the second part, in-person events, which uh, as COVID starts to fade from the landscape is something that we're seeing more and more firms and companies doing. Uh, well, of course, in the last couple of years, they've been focusing a lot on virtual events, and that's why we're going to start there. Yeah, and most companies are still on that virtual trend, right? So 92% of companies continued hosting virtual events even after the physical events could resume with the pandemic. You still have, you know, people afraid to travel. You're not going to get as many people in uh, a space together as you would before. So virtual events are still very important. Especially because they tend to be very, very cost effective to being almost free to do. Correct. There's, there's some that are extremely expensive to use. We're, we're not going to necessarily mention names here, but it, it can cover everything from a couple of hundred bucks all the way to tens, and, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, and it really just depends on the kind of event you're doing. Do you need to have virtual breakout rooms? Do you need to have virtual booths? And, and now we're really talking about much larger firms. For your typical firm that is, is you know, a couple of people in, in a particular line of business, um, you know, the, the freemium or even the free stuff is, is generally going to is going to be fine. Um, you just want to be able to create a, a, a good experience. And of course, one of the things that we've seen in recent years is that uh, there is a lot of virtual fatigue, is that people are very, very, um, they, they attended over the last couple of years a lot of virtual conferences and webinars and, and events. Uh, a lot of people still spend much of their, their, their life on Teams or Zoom. So how do you kind of stand out in that arena, provide value, fight digital fatigue and, and be able to communicate not just with your existing clients, but find a way to intrigue and engage prospective clients. Yeah, all that has to be done and figured out before you decide to host a virtual event. There's lots of things that can help drive people to your event, drive excitement around your event, right? Um, you want to make sure that you're promoting your virtual event as if it was you in front of the people for this event. You know, you want to know the audience that you're targeting when you start you want um, to create campaigns around it on social media social media with virtual events has been very helpful uh, especially with targeted ads so you can get on social media have a targeted ad to that audience that you've picked and you can stay in front of them um, it, for a relatively low cost you can get in front of you know thousands of people and because you're not restricted to you know the area that your event is hosted in you can open it up to more people and I think the, the the key thing is understand your audience. What are they going to find compelling? What are they not hearing elsewhere? What do you have to offer that is going to be a little bit different uh, just to provide your perspective on something that they might have heard a lot is probably <laughs> not going to stand out. But either going out to new audiences or going out with something that is new and different or pre presenting particularly compelling or well-known speakers can all be ways to, to stand out. Um, and making sure that you... Uh, are really smart about who you invite and how you publicize it, as Andrea uh, alluded to. Now, one of the things we're seeing with a lot of events is that people register, and <laughs> just because they they what they want to do is be reminded of the the recording that comes out afterwards or grab slides, and they don't actually attend, and that is not a bad thing. Ideally, right. you want them there live, asking questions. But the the fact that they were interested in the subject, that the fact that they registered. Uh, I think gives you permission, whether they attended or not, to provide the follow-up, to provide the recording, and as appropriate, to put them on your 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 email drip list, your nurture list, and and continue to to market to them things that, uh, including future webinars, but any other content that you might have. Yeah, I'm guilty of doing that myself, right? There's tons of marketing webinars out there and I want to listen to all of them, but you know, then that's my whole day. So I'm getting the the slides and the handouts. But you know, there's things that can help you to stand out before the event, during the event, after the event, um, that you really should focus in on. That you're you're having a event web page or a registration page is huge. Um, you know, a lot of people just rely on their event webinar platform, you know, oh well they offer me a registration link. I'll just use that. Um, what you don't realize is this is your chance to showcase the speakers that you're having, the special guests that you're having, any topics you're covering. Uh, you can tease things on this landing page. You can offer, you know, additional collateral for, you know, sign up for our newsletter. You can you can offer more beyond the event on your registration page. It, it doesn't just have to be give me your name and your email. Right, and it makes the event seem more interesting, more exciting, mm -hmm. more compelling. It makes it more an event. 
Yeah, and that in having one central you know page you can drive to also helps that social media engagement. Um, when you're sending emails out, you have one central location for people to go to to get all the information. If you have a sales team that is calling behind it, they know where to go for the information. So everybody has the same information in one general site um, instead of just a registration link that says the title. And one of the benefits, of course, of doing events digitally or virtually is data, uh, mm -hmm. because most of these tools that you use for your for your your webinar give you incredible insights into your audience. When did they lose interest? If they <laughs> lost interest, what was the average engagement? Uh, what, how long did they stay on? When did they leave? Um, and you can even do things like you know polling throughout the course of the the webinar, which is a best practice to sort of keep people engaged. Mm -hmm. You know, in general with presentations, whether it's online or in, in person, but especially online, try to do something different every 10 minutes. Whether it's a poll, pausing for questions, bringing on a new speaker, showing a video, it's really a great idea every 10 minutes to shake it up a little bit because that's a way of helping to, to sort of keep and hold people's attention. And if you have slides, I and mean, this is, you know, for live presentations too, but if you have slides... Don't just talk to the slides. Don't, you know, put a bunch of words on the slides that you're going to say. Make them visually interesting. You know, make there be some sort of connection to what you're talking about, but don't read every word off the slide. Uh, and don't put every word you're going to say onto the slide. Use imagery um, to keep them interested. Don't, you know, nobody wants to sit here and listen to you speak about something that they can literally read on the screen at the same time. Yeah, and especially on online, a dialogue is better than a monologue. Mm -hmm. So maybe you have two presenters and they're talking to each other and, and the, or they're trading off content. So that makes it much more, uh, I think, relatable and dynamic and it feels more like a conversation uh, in a way that I think is much more necessary online than in person. Yeah, certainly. And then you have to make sure they're two, you know, different personalities too. If, if they're the same people and, and one's monotone, the other one's monotone, it's not going to help your, your process. But if you know, we here at Symmetry, you know, when we do our quarterly podcast, we have two folks on there and they're chatting and it's a conversation instead of them talking at the people that are attending. It makes a huge difference. We've learned in the attendance and the uh, attentiveness of our audience. Um, you can also put handouts on a lot of these um, virtual platforms. And it's really important that you can offer your slides. But if you're, to, we have a webinar here at Symmetry on the growth plan. Well, we should have the growth plan document there for them to download. Yeah, anything you're re referencing, whether it is sort of articles of interest, mm -hmm. other resources, those are great. Uh, we even recommend where, where applicable, have like a bio sheet for the, the speakers Correct. so that people can download that if they're interested. And because it's all online, you can also track this. Yeah. Who downloaded the slides? <laughs> who downloaded the buyer sheet? If you had a special offer, a checklist, a, a guide, whatever, who downloaded that? Because now that is data you can use for subsequent marketing. Yep. And then the the big thing that I think where we lose a lot of the, the momentum from a virtual event is post-event, right? Um, we have the great before marketing. We get people on the webinar. Wonderful. You get 100 people registered. Fantastic. And then the webinar happens and there's no follow-up. Um, you know, it might be a thank you, we, you know, email. Some of the platforms do actually send your thank you email out for you. You don't want to do that. You want to create and, and craft an email. It can be a thank you for attending, but if you didn't attend, you can download the slides here. So you can do it all in one. Right here, Or here's the replay if you're right. able to get that up quickly. Yep. Or you can do, you know, a thank you for attending email with all of that information, any resources, and then a sorry we missed you. Here is the replay. Um, so you can do it together or separate, but make sure you're following up with these people and then, you know, nurture those leads that came in through your webinar. Don't just send them a thank you, but if they download one of your resources from that or click on one of your resources within that email, create a campaign around that. Make sure that you keep them engaged and get them wanting more from you because if it's a one and done, they're going to forget you. And that's an important point is that if you're doing virtual events very rarely should it be just one event. It should be a series, whether it's your quarterly update, uh, semi-annual update, you're doing a special series. Um, one of our partner firms has just been doing a four-part series on women and in investing. Yep. And what that allows you to do, of course, is after each one and even during it, you can be marketing and promoting the next one. Mm -hmm. If people like what they heard, they're more likely to come back and, and attend the next one and the next one and the next one. You're trying to build, um, ideally, a kind of a brand here. Oh, these, these people put on great content every quarter or every, every you know, six months so that they feel like, oh, I really can't miss this. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, what you're marketing, the one event you're marketing. So let's say you have one webinar you have going on. 
but you, it's in a series of four. Someone may not be interested in that one, so you're not getting in front of that person. But number three is one that they are interested in. They're like, oh, well, maybe I'll attend that one. Then they're going to get the recordings for all of them. Then they're going to get, you know, information on your company, and they're going to be interested in you, not just from the one that you thought they might like, but from the additional ones. Yeah, and we've even done things like where we've had three or four day virtual events mm -hmm. where there's two presentations usually every day. Uh, we encourage people to sign up for all of them, but also they can a la carte. And we found that that's been very successful in getting a number of people to to attend because you look at five or six presentations and you say, oh, those are at least there's two or three I'd like to attend. And right. We find that actually makes people more likely to sign up than they might have been if it had just been kind of a one off. Yeah. And to fight the virtual fatigue when you do multiple day events like that. Pick two times, three times during the day that you want to do those webinars, but give people a break in between. Don't have them sitting on a computer, you know, from eight in the morning to five at night. It's it's not beneficial. You'll lose their attentiveness. You'll lose them real quick, and, and you want to keep them engaged. Yeah, and, and I would say that while good visuals are important, it's important to shake things up every 10 minutes and, you know, don't rely too much on your slides. <laughs> Understand that a lot of people might be multitasking while they're listening yes. to you. So <laughs> That's very true. don't don't necessarily depend on, as you can see here on this slide, right. to, to, <laughs> right. to, to, to carry things. You need to sort of make the assumption that most people are not paying full attention. And so you just need to, they need to be able to get the information they need from what you're saying generally. Yes, very important, very important. So virtual events, they're not going away. Um, we will start to see people, you know, do more in-person events, but I think virtual events are a good supplement to an in-person event. Um, you can open it up, an in-person event up virtually if it's, you know, you want to include people from other states, but we are, I don't think we've seen the end of the virtual event. I think um, we will hit the fatigue and then we'll, we'll pick right back and up. And I suspect what you're going to see is, is as... <laughs> fatigue starts to fade, hopefully, <laughs> that people will be more willing and more interested to actually attend virtual events because it is convenient and you can do these things on, 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 your, on your own time. And I would say also, if you are doing a virtual event, be sure to record it. I mm -hmm. think that's absolutely essential. Be sure to send the recording out. Host it on your website where, where applicable. And uh, think about putting it on places like YouTube. Yeah, and you can make snippets of it for the following event, right? So if you do a similar event every year, we do our Advisor Fest. It's a three-day uh, webinar series. Do snippets from each of the the um, presentations from the previous one and use it to uh, market the next one. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, for, for things that you've posted to YouTube, think about maybe you uh, call out certain highlights and you say, you know, at, at seven minutes and 30 seconds, we talk about this and fi yep. and 14 minutes, we talk about this. So people can scroll ahead if they, if they want to just get to, to highlights or just cut it down and create a highlights reel. Yeah. And, you know, you could go as far as um, Michael Kitsis does a transcription of it. So he'll post his lo latest video, but he'll, you know, do the transcription so you can read it if you'd rather than listen. And there are a lot of services. In fact, uh, for example, Teams provides free transcriptions, mm -hmm. and they're pretty good. You probably want to go in there and at least edit it uh, because there are some bizarre <laughs> mistranscriptions. <laughs> but for the most part, it's, 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 it's good, it's useful, and that allows people who prefer to read versus listening um, to be able to access it as well. So the virtual event, uh, hopefully we've given you some great tips for you know, hosting and, and marketing a, a successful event. Join us on our next episode where we'll discuss in-person events uh, and how you can successfully market those in today's environment. Thank, Thank you so very much. much. Thank you. Symmetry Partners LLC is an investment advisory firm registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The firm only transacts business in states where it is properly registered, excluded, or exempted from registration requirements. Registration of an investment advisor does not imply any specific level of skill or training and does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission. No one should assume that future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, product, or non-investment related content made reference to directly or indirectly in this material will be profitable. As with any investment strategy, there is the possibility of profitability as well as loss. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions and or applicable law, the content may not be reflective of current opinions or positions. Please note the material is provided for educational and background use only. Moreover, you should not assume that any discussion or information contained in this material serves as the receipt of or as a substitute for personalized investment advice. Please note.
that nothing either stated or implied on this podcast is intended to be compliance or legal advice regarding your marketing program.